Howdy again everyone, and today I'm testing out a lens that I've been curious about ever since I first saw it in person at Photokina 2014. Today I have the Canon EF 400mm f4 DU IS2 USM. It's a long telephoto lens with a relatively bright maximum aperture and a prohibitive price of $7,000 in the US or about £6,500 here in the UK. It's a lens that I would never be able to afford to buy for myself, but I'm reviewing it here because I still find it pretty exciting in principle. It features special diffractive optics, which means the lens can be a lot shorter and lighter than usual for a 400mm optic, with a decent maximum aperture of f4. So that could make it a lovely option for wildlife photographers who are looking for a more lightweight, professional lens, or for more casual sports photographers. The 400mm focal length is just about the minimum you typically need for bird photography, but it can be used for any telephoto work really, and the maximum aperture of f4 can get you some great background separation, giving it potential for portrait photography too, although your subject will have to be pretty far away, of course. Let's take a look at the build quality first. The build quality of the lens is high, being metallic and very rugged. Its weight of just over 2 kilograms, or about 5 pounds, means that it's still a pretty hefty thing to be lugging around with you in absolute terms, but it is at least quite easily hand holdable, and features pretty dependable weather sealing. The lens comes with a tripod mount which is very secure and well designed, and can be easily twisted around to shoot in portrait mode while still mounted onto your tripod. The front of the lens is way too big for standard filters, so it features drop-in filters toward the rear, which are sold separately. The lens's focus ring is large, rubberized, and turns extremely smoothly, and turns around about 240 degrees, giving you lots of precision to work with. The image zooms in a little as you focus more closely to your subject, as you can see here. The ultrasonic autofocus motor, as you can see here, works fantastically quickly, pretty quietly, and accurately in my tests too. You'll hear a small amount of focus motor noise if you're shooting video with your camera's internal microphone. The lens also has a whole plethora of focus features to it that, frankly, I didn't have time to fully test out. I only had the lens for a couple of days this time, but you can preset the focus position, which some nature photographers and video makers could find useful, and there's a power focus mode to help you get smoother focus pulls when shooting video, although that's not such an important feature now that camera autofocus systems are getting so much better for video work nowadays. You also get the usual focus limiter options, which can be useful when shooting sports. This lens also features image stabilisation, which is obviously very useful at 400mm. Here's some footage with it turned off, and now turned on to mode 1, where you can see it performs fantastically well, holding your footage nice and steady. It behaves itself quite well when tilting and panning, too, without jerking around all over the place. Here is mode 2, which allows you to pan horizontally more easily, helpful for shooting sports and mode 3 will only activate the stabilisation when you hit your camera's shutter button, helping you to track moving subjects a little more easily. The lens's front element is way too big for a normal lens cap, and so you're left with a solution of turning the large hood around backwards, attaching it on, and covering it with this hardened soft cover. Well, that's just part and parcel of working with a super telephoto lens, you have to screw that hood in quite tightly too. Overall, the build quality is essentially perfect for a lens of this type, and I can't imagine even the most seasoned professional finding anything to complain about here. So let's move on to image quality. The original 400mm DU lens did not have a great reputation for sharpness, and its contrast was considered on the weak side, although it wasn't bad by any means. This newer Mark II version was a big improvement in image quality back in 2014, but what's it like on a newer, very high resolution camera? I've started by fixing it on to a Sony a7R II with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor, 
At F4, in the middle of the image, we see brilliant image quality right out of the gate. That sharpness and contrast are very impressive. The corners are less convincing, with a little blurriness emerging, although a reasonable amount of detail is still being captured here. Stop down to F5.6 for quite a noticeable improvement in the corners. F8 looks about the same, but F11 sees another little boost in resolution. Stop down as far as F16 to see a tiny bit of softness emerging from the effects of diffraction, and F22 looks pretty soft. So, the lens copes very well on a high resolution full frame camera, although the corner image quality at the widest aperture isn't quite what you'd expect to see on one of Canon's super telephoto lenses. The image quality compromise there is probably related to the diffractive optics design. Well, let's mount it onto an APS-C camera now, my Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its smaller and incredibly demanding 32.5 megapixel sensor. At f4, the lens is capturing just an average amount of detail here, and contrast is just ok. It seems like we're really pushing the lens to its limits right now, which is something this particular camera sensor likes to do the most. The image corners look just a little softer, but still, some reasonable detail is still being captured here. Image quality is about the same in the corners at f5.6, although the middle of the image looks just a little sharper, with slightly better contrast. Stop down to f8, and there's no improvement in the middle or the corners of the image, and f11 just starts to get quite soft due to the effects of diffraction. So, on an extremely high resolution APS-C camera, the lens is struggling a little, although it'll be much better on a 24 megapixel camera. Again, one of Canon's super telephoto lenses without diffractive optics should perform a bit better here. Anyway, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. Corrections are turned off in these pictures. The lens projects just a negligible amount of pincushion distortion, nothing you'll ever notice in normal shooting. With the aperture open at f4, we see some gentle vignetting slightly darkening the image corners. At f5.6 and f8, those corners fully brighten up. That's a fairly typical performance for a lens of this kind. Now let's see about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to 3.3 meters, which actually brings you a reasonable magnification when shooting at 400 mm The really good news is that the lens remains as sharp as ever when shooting close-up, even at f4. Remember, using an extension tube or a teleconverter with your lens will bring you even closer to your subject than this. Now let's see how the lens reacts to bright light in the picture. Surprisingly well, actually, it's pretty difficult to provoke flaring or glaring from this lens, even without the hood on, so the lens should be pretty dependable to use on a bright sunny day. And finally, bokeh. This lens can get you some nicely out of focus backgrounds, as you can see, and those backgrounds always look pretty nice and smooth to me, even quite complex and difficult backgrounds, no obvious problems here. Well, I don't often test super telephoto lenses like these, because I'm not an experienced sports photographer, but it was enjoyable to use this lens for a bit of wildlife photography. It's relatively small size for what it is, and very high build quality, and focus reliability and good image quality all make it a blast to use out in the real world. Its diffractive optics design will be pushed to the absolute limits by very high resolution camera sensors though. It's a sharp lens, but for $7,000 you might expect just a little more. Still, it's going to get you some wonderful pictures, while being relatively easy to carry with you for a 400mm f4 lens, so it has to come recommended.